welcome to Agent Renapier University MEC Business Management webinar. My name is Helen Sparopoulos and I'm the Admissions Manager at Stafford Global. And joining me this evening all the way from the university is Dr. Jackie Brody. Good evening to you, Dr. Jackie. Good evening, Helen, and good evening to everyone who's joined us today. Yes, and I can see there are quite a few of you that have joined us um, as far afield as Canada. I can see um, some, some uh, applicants from Canada, and I can see some candidates from Africa as well in the Middle East. Nice. Um, so welcome and, and thank you for joining us. Um, how we are going to uh, conduct the webinar this evening is I'm just briefly going to introduce you to Stafford Global. I'm then going to hand you over to Dr. Jackie, who's going to take you through the program, what is it about, uh, what models you'll be doing. So it'll be quite an extensive explanation and towards the end of the presentation you can see there's a, a section where you can type out your questions that you'd perhaps like to ask me or um, uh, Dr Jackie and uh, we'll try and answer them as, as quickly as possible. What I am going to do is try and group the questions together because a lot of them are similar if not identical. So do listen out uh, for the question and that all important answer. Okay, so let's get started. Um, who is uh, Stafford Global? Well, Stafford Global was established in 1993 and we are a resource center for distance learning education in the Middle East. Um, we also do uh, service uh, quite a few countries across, uh, or let's say continents across the globe. Um, we are very prevalent in Africa, as well as in Canada, India, and some parts of Europe. And uh, we are currently the resource centre for six UK universities and we do offer a variety of programmes uh, ranging from certificates to diplomas, bachelors, MBAs, MECs, right through until doctorates. So we really do have uh, the programmes for your personal and professional needs. Now, the mere fact that you're here with us this evening means that you have been in touch with one of our experienced uh, academic consultants. And our function here is to assist you throughout the application process, ensuring that you do get that very important unconditional offer from the university. And we do also offer uh, some academic as well as some administrative support. Right, so I'm now going to hand you over to Dr. Jackie and I'll be joining you again towards the end of the webinar. Over to you. Thank you, Helen. And um, thank you, everyone. And as I said earlier, thank you so much for giving up your evening to hear a little bit more about the programme at Edinburgh Napier University. And really what I want to do today is to emphasise some of the benefits of choosing us to support you in your postgraduate education. But I want to start off the webinar really with just giving you a bit of background about myself. Um, so my name is Jackie Brody and I am the MSc Business Management Programme Leader. And I've been at Edinburgh Napier now for over 15 years. I have a PhD in Information Systems Management and in fact, I've, as you can see um, from my qualifications, I've got quite a few degrees and what you'll find actually when you start the programme is that you will have instructors who have a similar wealth of qualifications and, and uh, they often have extensive business experience as well to share with you and support you in your learning as you move through the programme. In terms of myself, my areas of specialism, as you can see, really focused on the idea of the managing of innovation in organizations. I also look at the creativity and generating creative ideas. Um, I teach entrepreneurship at different levels within the university and I am very passionate about online learning in this school. And I used to be actually head of online learning um, before I became head of learning and teaching at Edinburgh Napier University. And as you can see, I'm an associate professor in entrepreneurship. Okay, so now that I've just said um, some information about me, um, let me just tell you a little bit about um, where we are in the world actually. And um, we are based, Edinburgh Napier is based in Scotland, which is just off continental Europe. 
Um, and Scotland is the top one third of the map of the UK, as you can see it. And it has nearly six million people. And we offer a very broad educational system um, in Scotland, um, teaching every single subject you can think of, um, um, from medicine to law um, to business. Um, one thing that, to know about Edinburgh Napier is that we're quite unique in, in Scotland just because of our, our real emphasis on employability and employment. And we find that often our master students they tend to get pr promoted reasonably quickly just because of the wealth of skills and knowledge and experience they gain while they're studying with us. And what I would really love is for that to happen to, with, to you um, once you join us on the programme. Okay, so that was a little bit about um, thinking where Scotland is in terms of Europe. But let's talk a little bit more about actually beautiful Scotland. Um, some of you may recognise the scenery on the slide. Um, as, you, as you might have seen it in a Harry Potter movie. Um, and we also have um, the famous Loch Ness in the picture as well. And um, many tourists come to visit Loch Ness in search of the world famous mythological creature, the Loch Ness Monster. Um, What's wonderful about Scotland is just the most magnificent scenery. And in fact, the Rough Guide called it the most beautiful country in the world. So Scotland as itself is just a lovely place to visit. And we're based in Edinburgh, which is classed as the capital of Scotland. So let me move on and just say some more about um, Edinburgh itself. OK. Um, Edinburgh is a really vibrant city. It's only one hour away from London. And often when people come to the UK, they'll fly up um, to Edinburgh just to visit it. Um, you're not too far away from the Highlands as well, so you can go and see lots of interesting landmarks that you wouldn't see anywhere else in the UK. But Edinburgh itself is just amazing to see. It's an ancient city. We have an imposing castle, which you can see in the picture. And that sits on a rock above um, Edinburgh city. And it's just glorious in the sunshine um, on a beautiful day. But Edinburgh itself has been voted one of the best cities to live um, in the world, actually, um, and in the UK. Um, and it's a wonderful accol accolade for us because it's not just a beautiful city. It's actually home to more FTSE 100 and technological startup countries than any other UK city outside London. So absolutely thriving um, city to experience. And what's amazing as well is, apart from the financial sector, we really have amazing arts festivals. So every year, every August, at the beginning of August, we have Thousands of people descend on us to take part in the largest arts festival in the world. And there's also the Edinburgh Fringe Festival taking place at the same time. So basically, we, we graduate. You would normally graduate in around about June time, um, sorry, July time. And if you want to travel around the UK and then come back for the festival, you're more than welcome to do that. OK, so. That's beautiful Edinburgh, as I said, lovely city. And it's actually looking really lovely today. We're not always good with weather, but today is beautiful. OK, so I spoke a little bit about Edinburgh, really, and um, where we are and, and how close it is in terms of, of places like London, etc. cetera. But um, let's have a little think about the actual campus itself and the university itself. We actually started off in 1964 as a technical college. And I think when you reflect on that, that relates back to what I said about us being very focused on employability and making sure people have the skills to make a difference in their own workplace. So several decades later, we are now a university, a real passionate, a really thriving university, very ambitious for our students, very ambitious for ourselves, and really innovative and inclusive. Um, so many amazing stats about us, really, but we're in one of the top 5% of world universities, so an amazing university with 1,500 staff and well over 100 staff would be on the online programmes as well, supporting um, our students. Okay, so an amazing 
place, as I said, and, and the university, a very vibrant, exciting place. So moving on to think about who we are, though, um, we, we, we've had a number of accolades. Um, one here that I've highlighted is just that we're considered number one in the UK for nurturing student talent. And really what that means is they look at the, where people come from and where they end up once they've finished their degree and they realise how developed and 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 an incredible journey that people go on um, by the end of their own studies. So really a great opportunity for you if you do decide to study with us. Here are some other accolades that we've gained over the years, um, such as five QS stars for teaching, employability and internationalisation. We're also the winner of the Queen's Anniversary Prize in 2015, and that's really been focused on our research with Timber. We are the largest UK provider of higher education in Hong Kong, and our research shapes the world around us. Really, our students are around the globe, and they take back all the knowledge and all the, the discussions that they have and put that back into their workplace. Um, interesting statistic, I think, 95% of graduates um, on our programmes actually go straight into employment. And when you think about the online, it's probably near 100 because nearly every single student is actually working and studying simultaneously at the same time. So a wonderful achievement for the students themselves and for us as well to have opened up our, our doors really to give everyone an opportunity to study an MSc with us. Um, in terms of startups as well, we have an incubation unit and we've started up within Edinburgh Neighbour 350 um, businesses um, that were student led in the last 10 years. So really strong figures there. Thinking about the way that Edinburgh Napier is um, shaped, thinking about the campuses actually, we have six schools um, and we have three campuses, as you can see, and um, we are the business school. And so we are based on a beautiful slope that overlooks the city. It's just such a prestigious view and actually a well-known building throughout the world um, that the business school is built beside. So we have a state-of-the-art um, state lecture theatre for students and it's just something that's really lovely. So hopefully one day you'll get that opportunity to come and visit us. We also have two other campuses. So if you were doing the, the, the business management with information systems and governance, then you'll get some lecturers who are based in the School of Computing. And that campus is much closer to the city centre of Edinburgh. And then we have a purpose-built, very modern building um, further away outside of the city um, where our nurses are trained and our scientists. So three lovely campuses all for, with very different um, characters and looks. Okay, so thinking about um, Edinburgh Napier as an educational provider, we've actually got over 18,500 students from more than 130 countries. And on campus, we have about 13 and a half students studying on campus in Edinburgh. It's actually become very vibrant lately. Um, a lot of students have decided to come and, uh, on campus at postgraduate level. So we've got lots and lots of um, alumni as well. Um, we've also got around 6,000 students studying at partner universities, and that's worldwide. And as I said, also online. But you'll get a very comparable experience if you study with us online. And we can find out a bit more about that um, in the following slide. Okay. Um, so first of all, I want to just say a little about who, who Global Online is, because when you enroll, when you start on your course, you'll, you'll hear about Global Online. And Global Online is really just a branding. Um, it's a way for you to understand that we have designed these programs in a very flexible way to allow you to study and to fit into your personal life and your work commitments. So we really, what we really love is the opportunity for people to come from anywhere and, and, and get that opportunity to study with us. 
Um, any of our programs have a very consistent framework, um, but we have some really unique features. We have a dedicated support team called Global Online Support. We have a frequently asked intelligent agent. You can ask questions. So if you want to know when deadlines are, et cetera, et cetera, then you can type them in to the intelligent agent Ben and ask him. We also have a map where students place where they are on the map and then they can connect with each other. Um, what you'll find with Global Online is it's 100% online. It's a uh, very flexible um the materials are highly engaging and um, you are involved in independent study as you progress through your module and um, but obviously you've got that potential for interaction with your fellow students and with your tutors to get support um, and there's three intakes per year as well and i think that's important to note january may and september really just there to suit your professional demands okay so this slide is just to give you an understanding of how global that we are and you can see just some of the countries actually that are part of our global online family we've got a lot of um students who come from tiny little countries in latin america and um, we have um students who are spread out without with spread throughout africa and um, obviously as you can see students throughout europe and the Middle East, Bahrain, Dubai, um, and and we've even got students as far away as Australia and um, New Zealand. So a lovely spread, lovely mix. When you're studying, you're going to have that opportunity to mix with these people, share knowledge, share understanding as you progress through your studies. Okay, so let me just tell you a little bit about the program that if you do decide to study with us, you would undertake, which is the MSc Business Management. Um, there is a general route through the programme, and you can see on this slide the actual modules of that general route. And on my next slide, I'll show you some of the, what we call with routes, some of the pathways through the MSc Business Management. But certainly, if you were just doing the core MSc Business Management, then you would do some really interesting modules. So there's Leadership, Strategy and Innovation, which looks at primarily at how you as a leader can implement strategy and innovation. There's organizational change and management. And what's great about organizational change management is just the sense of how you learn tools and techniques to support you when you're engaged in a changing, vibrant um, economic world. Then there's a module called Business Economics and Finance in a Global Environment. So you are looking at economics on the small and also look, um, sorry, at economics on the large and also looking at um, the, the finances at firm level. Um, a, a, new, a newer module is called Creating Business Excellence and Marketing and really you're looking at the different functions in the organisation and focusing in on the marketing function and how that can support business excellence. My own module, as I said, is Managing Innovation. We're going to look at the processes of innovation and how those can be managed. Um, and then there's Contemporary Issues and Strategic Management. Um, What's fantastic about this is, again, you get to learn new tools, new techniques around how to really just strategically manage effectively. And then once you've done your top modules and they're your top modules, you get to move on to the research methods module, which is where you choose a topic and you look at it in depth and you prepare a proposal. And once that proposal is accepted, you move on to the MSc dissertation and you work on um, the proposal topic for a full um, 40 credit dissertation. There are individual exit points throughout the degree, um, individual modules carry an award. Um, some people decide just to do a postgraduate certificate for 60 credits. Some people decide they don't want to do the dissertation and exit at postgraduate diploma. However, most people, nearly everyone, decides that they will just complete their MSc at 180 credits. Okay, so now I'm going to say a little bit about this sort of as I said, the specialist routes through the program. Um, the first one to notice is banking. This is excellent if you wish to further your career in that area or you're already in banking. Um, we have the MSc Entrepreneurship, and again, it balances the managing of innovation, but with the planning side, the new venture planning of starting up a new organization or a new unit within an organization. 
There's the MSC Events Management. And again, as I said, Scotland, very much about festivals and events. So you're going to get um, some of the best people in their field teaching on that programme. MSC Finance, again, useful for those who are thinking about going into finance degree um, career and are, are already um, in a finance career. In terms of MSC HRM, um, again, fantastic for those of you who wish to pursue a career in human resource management. MSC Hospitality and Tourism, very much about focusing on hospitality, managing um, hotels etc etc the MSCIS strategy and governance this is a wonderful um collaboration that we have with the school of computing and in that case you get to um un uh, study strategic information systems and security audit and compliance so really really interesting msc route there's an msc logistics and supply chain as well do global logistics and supply chains um, very popular option, actually. A lot of people, I think, want to go into the more logistic side of the organisation and really make a difference there. Um, MSC Marketing, again, for those who are pursuing a marketing degree, that's a fantastic option. And then finally, um, the MSC Project Management. Again, um, you get to, to study managing innovation alongside um, the project management module. Okay, so let's have a little think about what we're doing in terms of um, the resources that are available. There's just a whole set of resources which we support with support you with as you move through your studies. Um, the first thing is the global online induction. So that will introduce you to the university. It'll, it will show you how to be um, a good student. It will tell you all about the regulations and it will tell you a little bit about studying online. Then we'll move, you will move on to have a look at the, your programme page, the Global Online MSc Business Management page. Um, you will get the opportunity to connect with others on your programme. Um, and as I said, there's a nice map there so you can see if you can locate anyone in your, in your local region um, that you want to talk to. And um, then you'll move on to look at your two modules and they all have their own um, Moodle sites, their own virtual learning environments where you can take part in discussions with you, the rest of the class and your tutor. So thinking about the structure of the programme, you're encouraged to study up to two modules per trimester. That's a lot of work if you think about it. Each module would be considered around about 200 hours of learning. Um, so just think, do you have that available to you within your working week? Um, and as I said, lots of resources to support you as you study. There's a predetermined weekly help session where you log in and you can speak to other students um, and lots of other resources as well, lots of skill resources to support you. Okay, so what does the normal pro, um, module look like within a program? Um, it normally has a short video welcome from the module leader. It has 10 subject specific units and you find out a little bit about the learning outcomes, um, the prescribed reading, the self-assessment questions, um, the reflective exercises, end of unit summaries, end of progress tests, and then also some further reading. So quite detailed um, instructions given and interactive experiences as you progress through the modules. You also get discussion topics, case studies, outline solutions, um, so lots and lots of useful things. In terms of study, if you start in May, you will have um, several weeks, about 14 weeks to finish um, your studies until um, you submit your coursework. Um, and you will also have support um, in terms of revising for the final assi assignment. And there is no exams. It's all coursework based. So just to let you know that in advance. Um, we have lots of support available to you. There's videos made that cover the library, critical thinking. There's been a recent development where there is a really detailed induction um, Moodle site. And I just think this is just amazing. It talks about critical referencing, etc and um, improving your academic writing. So please, if you start with us in May, log on, have a look at it. Um, you'll also get an opportunity to meet your programme team, 
Um, you'll have get-togethers as you progress through. So lots of activities going on with the program. Here is my own module. And as you can see, there's an introductory video on this module and even an Edinburgh clock. And the reason why there's an Edinburgh clock is just to let you know what time it is um, in the UK. And if you're expecting a response from us immediately, um, it might take a while if you're on a different time zone. OK, so just to flag that up. In terms of weekly bite-sized learning, as we said, it's split into 11 units of learning. Um, there's written material in each of the units and progress tests and self-assessment tests. So everything is there for you. Nothing should be hard to get. It's all self-contained in your learning. And as I said, there's academic discussion forums and there's weekly sessions online and you'll either get the transcript or you'll get the recording to watch um, of those interactions between the tutor and the students. In terms of capturing your thinking as you progress on the module, there's a workbook. People do reflective exercises in the workbook um, on, and they often relate it back to their own organisation. And what's great is at the end of your studies, you'll have all these workbooks. You can print them off, take them away and really start thinking about your own organisation and how you can help grow it. In terms of operational rules, we have a module leader who's in charge of the module and they'll have an online tutor who will give you academic leadership and support as you progress through the module. There's global online support team who give you the non-academic support. Um, they will contact you if you're not logging in to your Moodle site to look at your modules. They will contact you. The module leader will contact you. Everyone is there to support you. In terms of university policy, um, when you communicate with anyone, then you need to use your Edinburgh Napier email account so that I know where you are in your program. If you don't, then I won't know your number and it'll, it'll be a lot slower for me to give you the support that you need. Okay. All right. So just kind of finishing up now, but I just want to say a little bit more on the entry requirements. So the entry requirements for the program are um, a degree. And if you have got a UK degree, then it would be looking at um, a classification of a of a lower second. Um, but we're really looking for applicants with a background in any subject discipline. And we may even consider lesser qualifications if you have that professional work experience. But what you need to do in terms of that is speak to your Stafford consultant. I can't stress that enough that they will help you to best put forward your argument about why you should be able to join the course if you've not got the normal requirements that, the, that we would accept. Also in terms of English language, if it's not your first language, then you normally need to undertake some kind of approved language test. Um, I kind of, as we're finishing up here, I want to just say some more about um, some of the feedback that I've received on the module. And I think you can see that students are really infused and happy about the, the types and, of learning that they have on their program. Um, as you can see, I'm impressed with Ian, you and our teaching and supporting staff for bringing the classroom to my living room. Um, thank you so much for your feedback and the support and the materials and the way that it was delivered. Um, I've really enjoyed it. It's been an eye opener. Um, as an airline pilot with limited exposure in the business environment, I am truly grateful for the guidance given by you, which I followed in the general forums and your personal efforts to the very last day to make sure we give our best submission. So thank you. So we put in a lot of effort to support you and also Stafford as well. They have exclusive grants and they can tell you all about that. And they will also indicate to you the next deadline. But we will be starting again um, in May um, with a new group of students. So don't delay if you want to apply, but they'll be able to tell you when that deadline is. OK, so um, thinking about it as a whole, um, I'm, we're, I'm happy to take any questions now. And I'm going to hand back to Helen. Hi, Helen. Hi, OK. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jackie. That was very, very informative. And uh, we do have a few questions. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm already starting to 
together. Um, one of the questions that has come through is that what is the difference between an MBA and MSc? I do understand that they're both master's program, but what would differentiate the two? I think you've got to think about the MBA as primarily having people who have a lot of experience in their workplace and who are going to be able to talk a lot about their experience and, and the groups and the modules. And so they will bring a lot to the modules. Whereas with the MSc, you're not necessarily expected to even come with a business background. Um, we get, um, for instance, people who come from, say, health backgrounds who want to learn about business management, who maybe want to move up and become a manager. So in terms of, of what we give you, I think with the MBA, it comes more from the actual students themselves. And with the MSCs, we give you lots more examples and a lot more support around the thinking around the theories and the ideas. Okay, and does your university actually accept any credit exemptions? Um, I know that some universities do not, but does yours um, accept and how many? Um, you would need to, we would, I would need to see your transcripts. I would need to see what you had actually done before any decisions could be made. But we have in some exemptions, yes. Okay, and I would like to add uh, to that, it's very important that you do also submit the learning outcomes um, of the modules that you have submitted, because uh, that will make uh, Dr. Jackie's job a lot easier to be able to map uh, the... Exactly, the, um, exactly. Uh, um, a very common question um, that is asked throughout uh, the globe is, um, is distance learning actually written on my degree? Um, because this would obviously be a detriment uh, to me. Okay, so what happens at graduation is you come to graduate and you actually stand next to someone who's taking the same course on campus and you both receive identical certificates. So nowhere on your transcript or on your degree does it say online. Okay, I have seen that there are quite a lot of uh, specialisations. Um, mm -hmm. If I choose to, to do one specialisation and complete it and then I need to do another specialisation, do I get credits for any of the modules that I've already completed? No, you're not able to, given the university's regulations, to actually take another MSc degree. You can only take that one MSc. So be careful in your initial choice of um, what route. Okay, and uh, with regards to English uh, requirements, uh, please do get in touch with your academic consultant. Um, exactly. There are various uh, rules and regulations uh, that we can actually um, assist you with. Um, so do, do get in touch with your consultant. We'll be able to assist you with that regard. Um, what is the maximum time period that the university provides me to finish the program? Um, I know that I can, I can do two modules at a time to shorten it, but if I need to take a break, what is the, the longest time period? There's, there's, don't, don't worry about taking a break. Some students do actually take a break up to two years and then come back. And you can, you can understand that. Sometimes people have children, sometimes they move country and they need to take a break. That's absolutely fine. But the recommended maximum is four years um, to complete the degree. So do have that in your mind. But obviously, when you take those two years out or a year out, um, that won't be counted. Okay, what type of uh, workload is there if I have to take two modules at the same time? Uh, I know that I would like to finish it in a short period of time, but I'm afraid that um, this will burn me out. Yeah, it really is your choice, but you need to think about having between seven to ten hours almost every week available for each module. So that probably works out if you think about it, maybe an hour a day for each module. So maybe two hours a day, but you need to think about it. A lot of people leave the work till the weekend um, and that's absolutely fine. Again, it's flexible, so it's to fit in with your schedule. 
Okay. Um, and how quickly do the tutors actually get back to you if there is an issue on an assignment or if I need a question answered? The reason I'm asking this is I have been with other institutions and it takes quite a while for the tutors to come back to me. If it's just a general question, then we have a policy where we should reply to you within a few days. Um, but if it's a more difficult, more complex question, then obviously we may have to seek guidance from someone else. So if the tutor may need to seek guidance from your module leader. But certainly a normal question like, when is my deadline? How long should this section be? We'll be able to get that back to you very, very quickly. Absolutely. And, and don't forget the university has got a very, very strong student support system as well. With the global um, online support. Exactly. The global online support um, are very, very good at actually providing you with the relevant information that you would require. Mm. Um, and what is the pass mark for any late submission on an assignment? So currently, the university are using a grading system. Um, but that will stop in September and we will go to percentages. So if you start with us, though, in May, you will be part of the, the old grading system for your first two modules. And so the pass mark for that would be a P1, but that would be equivalent to 50% in a percentage system. And we're moving to percentage system come September. Okay, and uh, can I take a, a core and an option modules? Um, I am under the understanding that some modules may not be available in all trimesters, uh, but can I take one core and um, one optional or do I have to follow a structure? Um, the, there is a sort of a recommended guide. So we, we are, Global Online are aware of when each of the modules run. And as, you, and as you rightly say, some of them only run maybe once or twice a year. So you should be aware of that. But you can definitely take a core if it's um, and an optional module. If the optional module is running, you can definitely take it. And with a core module, they're usually running every semester. But if I have a valid reason for not being able to submit my assignment, will I be able to get an extension? Yes, of course. So and it, it, there is an extension policy that allows you up to 10 working days if you've got a valid reason. And we also allow you to defer your assessments um, with more extensive evidence and you would submit that to a committee and they would approve it. So there's lots of options there to support you. Um, I know I'm a distance learning student, but do I get a student card? And if so, how do I get that? I love this question because it means so much to students when you talk to them to be part of Edinburgh Napier. And yes, you do get your card. And it means that when you come to campus, you can use it. You can take books out of the library if you want, if you're visiting um, or you're based in the UK. So. Yes, indeed, you get your card and it gets sent to you, so you don't have to do anything. Would it be possible to actually meet any of my tutors face to face if I am traveling to the university? I, I've met several students in the past, just as long as you give people enough time. And I think that's the main thing. I did have some students who traveled from Africa who phoned me up that very day and wanted to see me so i didn't have as much time as i would like to have i like to show people around i like them to see what the campus is like um so of course you can and when we graduate you'll get invited to come and visit us as well and i really hope you will come and do that and if i do fail an assignment um do i get a critical review so i know where i have gone wrong and i can resubmit Quite extensive guidance is provided on the virtual learning environment, but where you went wrong and what sections you have to redo. So you will understand where the issues are, but if you still want even further guidance, you can speak to your tutor, speak to your module leader, but also speak to academic skills. Because often why people fail is not even the content that's provided, but the way that they presented it. So academic skills or the librarian can give you additional support to make it an even better piece of work. 
And what would happen if I cannot attend a graduation? You did mention in your presentation um, about uh, the graduations, but what would happen if I cannot attend it? Yes, sadly, some people just can't get visas to come to the UK. So what happens to them is they graduate in absentia and it doesn't actually cost them anything. They just have to remember to register to graduate. But it's fantastic and it gets sent out to them, the, the, the scroll. So they, they get that sent to their house. Um, I, I do not have an undergraduate degree. Will you be able to accept my application on the basis of my work experience? You need to send that. Staff, again, speak to your staff or consultant. They can advise. We're really looking for evidence of managerial level as well so that we know that you'll be able to um, engage and critically think about the issues on the modules. So straight to your staff or consultant for a discussion around that and and seeing how much you've actually done previously absolutely and why is this program not externally accredited um, I do know that there are some um, programs out there that have got external accreditation why is this not with you um, we haven't gone for any external accreditation yet. We are in the process of going through EACSB. This morning I was writing EACSB accreditation material actually as Head of Learning and Teaching. So fingers crossed that we get that in the next few years, but at the moment we don't have any accreditation attached to the programme. Okay, and uh, one final question is why does your programme not have any examinations? Um, does that mean that it is an inferior program? That's an interesting thing to think about. We started off having examinations, but what we found was it was unfair to the students who started the exam at six in the morning and to the ones who finished the who were finishing exams at ten o'clock at night because our students are global. So we, we feel to support all students that actually giving them opportunity to look in depth and explore topics themselves and craft um, reports is actually more in tune with real life than examinations um, that you might never have to do again in real life. Excellent. Good. Great. Well, I have managed to actually group all the questions together. Thank you, Helen. Um, really good quality questions. Lovely questions that have come through, fantastic. Um, as uh, Dr. Jackie has said, we are currently accepting applications for the May cohort. Um, the application deadline is the 8th of May and the program will start on the 18th. Um, so we really don't have much time left and um, I'd love for you to get in touch with your academic consultant, get those documents into uh, the university and get that unconditional offer so you can start the program on time. Um, again, thank you so much for being with us, uh, Dr. Jackie. And thank for you, Helen. From the Middle East right through to Africa and Canada, thank you for joining us and hope that you'll join the program soon. A good evening. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you and good, good evening.